the pump runs and pumps water out. Uh, the left side then also on that outlet, the corner in that outlet is on uh, the switch. And the right side of that is hot. So it's the switch here. Yeah. And then these two top ones, I think, I'm not sure which is which, a pool light and a spa light. So one or the other for pool light and spa light. And then this one is the blower for the spa blower that's inside the pool area. There's a switch in there for the blower, but I put this one out here so that you don't have to go back in there to turn the blower off and you're setting that And then in here, so clean out of the house. Again, this is a backflow prevention, and then split out, and they're using three of them. So one is just over here to the hose. And the other one, this one is what goes to the toilet and the outside that I was talking about, the outside uh, faucets over there. Uh, I, I would say just be a little careful when you're setting them on and off that you, you know, support it, right? Mm -hmm. No biggie. And then this is the full one. On and off. And then, so you can also, you know, each of those have a shut off on it. These these are fairly new hoses. I use the reinforced fiberglass uh, reinforced hoses because there's a lot of pressure on it, and we leave them leave this one on, this one's off, but it still has water, so I don't shut them off here, I shut them off up there. So keep an eye on them. Um, I have replaced them, uh, but not very often. So just keep an eye on it. If it starts really bulging or you know replace it. No biggie. And then the shut off, just shut it off here. If you want to shut everything off, shut that off. You shut them off here to leave the others on and do maintenance on this side or whatever. I don't turn it all the way up. I mean, you don't need full pressure, and that kind of helps save on the pressure for these. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy, so this is a junction box for the spa light. So the spa light there comes up here, comes through here, and then over to the breaker panel. So you have this in here, so if you need to change the spa light, if it ever burns out, mm -hmm. which, which I have replaced it, mm -hmm. you come here and you take the wire nuts off and then you can pull it through. And what you do is you put a string on this end as you pull it through and then you can put new end and you can pull it back. Right. Right. But this is just a switch on that light. And the only time it comes on, uh, mainly turned on, is in the wintertime. So you get all this out here. The only thing I end up doing is leaving the water for the pool to even in the wintertime. There's evaporation and you don't have to drag a hose out, but you could. You can drag the hose out, but still it's connected through here too. So I'll turn that light bulb on. Doesn't burn much energy, but it keeps the temperature here enough that it never freezes. And, and it will freeze here. Yeah. In Michigan, I mean, it, you get your worst freezes there, but it will it will freeze here. So. Hmm. But that's how that operates. So, like I said, this goes to the toilet, and from there it goes around the inside to those two in the back. All right. Same thing here, that riser outlet is for the pool light. So you can disconnect there, pull it out, push it back through. this set up a lot of a lot of them will set up to where this though this won't turn on unless your pool pumps on and right I don't have that wired up that way uh, I like to just manage when my pool sweeps on it's not something you need to run every day and if you have it wired up this is on and it's mechanical so you got an on on tab and an off tab um, if you hook those up, then it's just going to run every day, and you just don't need to run it every day. So I make it separate. So it's a manual thing. I come out and I turn it on, and I turn it off. Um, what else? Oh, it's got a freeze guard that is wired in to the to the main pump. So this is uh, probably set about 34, if I remember right, 34, 35 degrees. Again, it's man mechanical. It's not digital. But when it gets down to that temperature, 
this senses it and it's wired so that it kicks the pump on even though no matter what the timer's at it'll kick the pump on the main pump to circulate the water so it doesn't freeze and then when the temperature warms up it'll kick it back off um, the spa is also coming off of here and it's I believe it is wired so that this has to be on to turn the, the heat on and we can check that So the zero's off, the one's on, there's no circulation, there's no display, it's not going to come on. So I turn the pump on. And then you get the lights all up. Yeah. Lights up, it'll go through a, maybe a sequence, I forget what it does, and it's sensing the water temperature, spark, you heard it click, it's going to light, it may take a few tries. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the temperature up and down, nice and easy. Up down. You can hear it, hear it blowing, heat the bunder up. So, water temperature is 87, it's up to 92. You can increase the temperature just by hitting that or, or lowering it. The modes, we'll leave the book on it. I never do anything with it. Part of it's for diagnosis, like mouth leaks, uh, codes and stuff. But So, as I said before, what I always do is I turn that off when I'm done. It's not gonna come on. Yeah, no matter what. Okay. The valves. So to, to turn the spa on only, is turn this one. I don't I never do it while it's partialized. Turn it this way, turn this and this way. So they're all all three are pointing this way. And it's drawn from the spa and putting in the spa. So it's when you're heating heating, that's how you get it to heat the heat just the spa. So just turn that, all the handles go east, on each of these, and it circulates so it's hit the spot. And then this way, this is configured so that it's, uh, so this is the return, it's only going to the pool, and the draw is coming from the two skimmers and the main drain. And you can set it where it's only the main, or only the skimmers, but you should set it to where it's a little bit of the skimmers, a little bit of the drain, and that's, that's this configuration here. So that's really all you end up doing is this configuration or switch these two to the spa. And that's how you have skimmer basket here. And you know, once you guys are in and you're really gonna be using it, if you're gonna pull service until then, when you're back when you're here and all that, call me, I'll come over and I'll go through this again. This, this lid is your stone trap and the course trap with the top with the shutoffs and the water flow. You just hit this, it'll loosen up, there's no ring in there. Take the lid off, the basket comes out, you spray it out, clean it out, put it back uh -huh. in, put the lid on, and that's, okay. that's all you need for maintenance with that. And then the filter, uh, it's a DE, diatomaceous earth filter, so it's not sand. And I'm not sure what else might be out there, but it's a big standard is a DE filter, and I'll show you. Are you familiar with DE? I'll show it to you. Um, and there's there's two clamps, one here and one on the other side. You undo those, the ring clamp comes off, the top half comes off, and then the whole grid assembly just pulls up on a, an assembly, and you can take it out and you clean it. We end up taking all the grids out. We'll do it four times a year or so, just depends what the UCs, how dirty you think your pool's got, and then all that, and just spray them all out, and then put it all back together and put it in. I will tell you that, you know, so one key thing is don't lean on it. This is fiberglass. It's aged and weathered in the sun, and I did that doing, maybe putting this thing in or something, and I just, and I had fiberglass in the arm. Mm. It just itches and prickly until it wears itself out, okay? So, it's standard for to be fiberglass, but it's it's older. Uh, in fact, I don't think you can buy this model anymore. Uh, plus, the grids that are inside are pretty old. Every now and then, they've replaced over time. But I mean, it's still working. There's no hole. Once you get a hole in the material of the grid, then the DE can go through and you get DE back there in the pool water. Um, it takes a decent size hole to really make a difference, right? But 
um, once you get a hole, you gotta replace it. These these are pretty old. They're still working. There's the corners on some of them are there's plastic inside, the plastic grid and a bag over it, so to speak, a filter bag. Uh, it's from the manufacturer where you can't replace the bag, you gotta replace the whole assembly. I would recommend that you consider just replacing this unit sometime down the road. The grid's in there, we cleaned it not too long ago, um, I don't know, a month or two with that, and the, the corners are starting to collapse. And I don't know if that's just because of the, the pressure and the brittleness, the chlorine and the water dries out plastic and over time, you know. The receipt for this, I think, is going to be in there. We got it from Leslie's Pools. But it's been a long time. So that's something you should consider just having to come out and replace the whole thing because it's all the, the clamping mechanism is, is all new nowadays. It's easier for you to, to use and get into when you're cleaning filters. But you might, once you do it, you might have somebody clean it so you can see how to do the grids the first time. But it's not hard. It's not hard to do. So. I've always, I've never paid anybody to come out and do the grids. So, okay. Other than that, this, this is a, a three inch clean tab, auto feeder kind of deal, like the septic kind of system. But, uh, we stopped using this and started using these. Chlorine tabs, you just drop them in the, skin, in the skimmers. And we'll put like one in each, there might, there might be two in each now. We may use more during the summertime. These are efficient, it's not harmful to pipes. It's easy to do. This thing, what, I guess two things happen. One, is, uh, the hose that come out to here, to here, uh, had, had a split rupture. And then the other thing is, the chlorine builds up a, res a, a residual in here to where it, you gotta scrape it out. Not that big deal, we used it for years, but when that hose failed, it was like, so cut to pool store, got these things, this is so much easier. So I just capped it off until so this is not not used. It could be made to use, but if you don't end up not wanting to do this, get this replumbed and put it work. So. Put the DE in, you stir it up, and you just pour it right back in the skimmer. It comes through the system and coats the, coats the grids, and you know, that's what you'll do more frequently than you will take it apart by, by far. Uh, and to do that, with the pump off, you turn this 90 degrees in line this way and pull up, turn the pump on, and then it blows it out. So this is a diverter, right? So it blows it out down here, and it goes all the way to the backyard underground. And you do that in cyclic, you know, maybe 10 times, eight times, you know. The, the purpose of this piece here is so you can see through. And when it's dirty, you'll see it flowing through dirty. When, you, when you're probably done backwashing, it'll be more clear. More clear. Not that it's ever like out of the you know. And then, so it's, it's this way and up, and then you shut the pump back off so it's not blowing out the backwash. You push it down and turn it this way, and it's back to normal. So it's just, it's just turn and up, push down and turn. And what I do, just because I'm kind of anal sometimes, <laughs> I, uh, it's I okay, have, your stuff lasts longer when you like that. Yeah, I have this, and I'll show you what I do with it out there. I'll put it on the drain, because it comes up from the ground, right? And so I'll put this over the pipe that comes up from the ground, and I can direct the water away from where it's coming up here. Otherwise, it's coming up here, and it's just going to flow where gravity's going to take it. And you don't have to do it, it's just what I do. Just, and I'll show you out here with that. This decking is artificial wood. Uh, it's not real wood. You can stain it. It's just been a while since I stained it, but bottom line, you'll just be staining a lot if you want to just hurt through stain. Yeah. The sun 